unexpected thoughts. I know that the freshmen think they're so cool, being like so silly. Okay. Okay. Less than 8 2 Pythagorean theorem. Some of the, a lot of this will be review, which is nice. Um, on a right triangle, this corner is 90 degrees, and we know that because of that little square. The sides adjacent to that 90 degree angle are called the legs of the triangle. So this is a leg, and this is a leg. Then the side opposite the 90 degree angle, so this side right here, is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle. So the side opposite to the right angle is called the hypotenuse. Pythagorean theorem, which should be review, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And a and b are the legs. And then C is the hypotenuse. Okay, um, to find the hypotenuse, um, the two legs right here are your A and B, and then this here is the hypotenuse. So when you set up Pythagorean theorem, four squared plus 11 squared equals X squared and then you can solve for x, the hypotenuse. The Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangles, too. So then to solve it, 16 plus 121 equals x squared. And then the last step is to take the square root of both sides, so you get x equals 11.7. Okay, the next example, we're finding a leg. So this time we're finding A, we have B, and we have C. Using the same equation, A squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. And then this time we're solving for A. Okay, so next like concept is called the Pythagorean triple. These are three common um, numbers. Common numbers that satisfy the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So one of those is three, four, and five. So if you see like three and four as two sides of a right triangle, you know the third side's five. And this one comes up over and over. Also, the numbers 5, 12, and 13 come up as common side lengths of right triangles. And so does 7, 24, and 25. And then, of course, anything similar to that is a right triangle as well. So if you were to double these numbers and get 6, 8, 10, that's a right triangle. Okay, examples, now we're just going to practice or review using Pythagorean theorem. For number one, it shows A and B here, and then we're solving for C. So three squared plus three squared equals X squared. And then plug this in a calculator and you get about 4.2. The instructions say to write your answer in simplest radical form, but we're going to do decimal form. Number two, now we have A, we're going to solve for B, and we already have C. So plugging this in the equation, 9 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared. Go 
let's say that's 144, x equals 12. Julie, please put the food away. Put it away, please. Okay, number three, last example, A and B here, and then C here. Plug it into the equation, 25 squared plus x squared equals 65 squared. 25 squared is 625. And then take the square root of both sides to get x equals 60. next page you might be thinking okay I get it what else now um, so these are just different types of questions that can be asked about triangles this first triangle inequality theorems this first concept the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side so in order for something to be a triangle a plus B has to be greater than C so here we have 2, 2, and 5 as lengths. 2 plus 2 is not greater than 5. So therefore, this is not a triangle at all. Why is it not a triangle? Well, if you have like a segment 2 units, 2 units, it wouldn't even reach um, a unit that's 5 units, or a segment that's 5 units. So the two shorter sides has to be longer than the third side. And then here, 3 plus 6 is not greater than 10. So therefore, this is not a triangle. And I chose 3 and 6 because it's the shorter of the two sides. And then here, 9 plus 8, it is greater than 12. So yes, this is a triangle. Okay. The next concept, we've already talked about this before, um, but the longest side is opposite the largest angle and vice versa. So when we look at these examples, it's asking us to list the angles in order from least to greatest. So what I'm going to do is look for the angle opposite the shortest side. So this is the shortest side here. The angle opposite that would be angle T, so that's the smallest angle. And then the second longest side is right here. So angle R is next. Then the largest angle is opposite the longest side, so be angle S. Example two, list the sides in order from shortest to longest. So the shortest side will be opposite the smallest angle. So that must be segment BC, then segment AB, and segment AC. Okay, and converse of Pythagorean theorem, if a triangle has side lengths a, b, and c such that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle is a right triangle. So just as when we have a right triangle, we can find, find side lengths using this, um, if the side lengths work, then it is a right triangle. So it asks, is triangle PQR right triangle? Well, this is a, b, and c, so is 10 squared plus 10 squared to 3 squared equal to 20 squared. Let's find out. 
So 10 squared, of course, is just 100. This one, it looks a little complicated, but it's not too bad. If you just set it up like this, um, 10 times 10 is 100. And then square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. So it comes out to 300. And then 20 squared is 400. Well, 100 plus 300 is 400. So yes, it's a right triangle. Then the last concept before we do some examples, it says if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, then triangle ABC is acute. And if a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, then triangle ABC is obtuse. Okay, so looking at the examples, it says determine whether each set of numbers can be measured, measures of the sides of a triangle. If so, classify the triangle as acute, right, or obtuse. Justify your answer. Okay, starting with the first one. To determine if it's a triangle, 11 plus 60 must be greater than 61. So 11 plus 60, the two shorter sides added together, is greater than the longer side. So yes, it's a triangle. Then we have to determine if it's a right triangle, acute, or obtuse. And we do that using Pythagorean theorem. 11 squared plus 60 squared is that equal to 61 squared. They do equal to each other, so therefore this is a right triangle. Number two. Um, first thing I'm going to do, six plus 12, is that greater than 18? No, it's equal to 18, so it's not greater. This is not even a triangle. Number three. Three plus five, is that greater than seven? Yes, it is. So yes, it's a triangle. And then use Pythagorean theorem to figure out if it's a right triangle, acute, or a two. So three squared plus five squared, does that equal seven squared? So it comes out 34 is less than 49. So if we look up above, if a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, or if c squared is greater, then it's obtuse. Next one, 8 plus 13, is that greater than 22? No, it's 21, that's less than 22, so this is not a triangle. And we don't need to do anything more, we know it's not a triangle. And then over here, number five, 6.2 plus 13.8, is that greater than 20? No, it's equal to 20, so therefore, not a triangle. Well, it's not asking us that. Okay. Six. Six plus eight. Is that greater than 10? Sure is, so yes, it's a triangle. Then we need to determine if it's right acute or 
obtuse. 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. And it is a right triangle. Number 7, 6 plus 11 is greater than 14. So yes, it's a triangle. And then use Pythagorean theorem. One fifty seven is less than one ninety six. So since C squared is greater, then it is an obtuse triangle. And number eight, we first have to determine if it's a triangle. Um, two plus square root of eight is about two point. Eight. Um, that needs to be greater than whatever square root of 12 is, which is 3.5. And 2 plus 2.8 is greater than 3.5, so yes, it's a triangle. And then setting it up in the Pythagorean theorem, this looks more complicated than it actually is. Get four. Square, square root of 8 squared is just 8, and then square root of 12 squared is just 12. 4 plus 8 is 12, so this is a right triangle. And that's it. Okay, thank you guys for being quiet during the recording. Um, you have the rest of the class to get your homework done, and then start Khan Academy for the week. And you can get the laptops.